Hey everyone, it's Niall from AmstradNoob.com and today we're going to take a look at this ultimate MIDI board for the Amstrad CPC. But what is it exactly? Well, uh, it gives you the ability to play and hear MIDI music directly on your Amstrad CPC and even to connect it up to a PC or even a MIDI device. You can see there is a MIDI out DIN socket here, MIDI in, there are some dip switches which control the functionality of the device, a reset switch for the CPC itself, there is this uh, blue pill chip I think it's called, which has its own uh, reset switch right there, um, there are some LEDs which show up when it's plugged in, and uh, there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and on the back uh, of the device you see this S2 MIDI synthesizer um, sound card. You can get an even better one which I've written about in my blog on this product so check that out it's supposed to give even better sound quality. This just basically is slotted into the back of the device. So this is the device, but if you look at the bottom of it, the connector is not compatible with plugging in directly into the back of your Amstrad CPC 6128 or 464 or even 664. So in order for you to connect this up to a CPC, you're going to need a connector. So the connector itself uh, is can be one of these Lambda boards, which allows you basically to connect the uh, edge connector on the Ultimate MIDI card directly into one of these three connectors on this board. And this one will plug in quite happily into the back of a 464, 664 or 6128 expansion slot. It even has another extension um, connector on the back so that you can plug in another card. And that's important because we will be plugging in a, another card, and that other card will be this one, which is a ROM box, <clears throat> and it's populated with three ROMs already, one of which we're using, which is the Maxim ROM, and I've turned off Protex and Utopia by using these dip switches here. So why do we need that? Well, uh, it gives us additional functionality uh, when we're running some of the programs on the CPC. We'll see that a little bit later. Um, so, how do we connect this one up? Then we can pick the first connector, I guess. Just line up the pins, hopefully correctly. And it's in place. Now, it looks a bit weird, but when it all connects up, you're going to have some amazing sound. So, Let's plug it into the back of the CPC and see how we can start using this. Okay, so now you can see that I have connected the uh, Lambda board into the back of this CPC 6128. I've plugged in the Ultimate MIDI board into the Lambda board. I've connected up uh, an audio cable, which is in turn connected to the speakers. And on the back of the Lambda board, I have my ROM board connected with um, Maxam enabled via the dip switch. So that should be everything ready for us to start testing software. So let's just turn it on first. And when it's on, you can see there's a little red LED there. Uh, when we start playing MIDI uh, songs through there, or sounds, you will also see a yellow one flashing. And on the screen, we can see that it says the usual Amstrad welcome message. Plus, there is this Maxim uh, 1.5 assembler. That is the Maxim ROM uh, boot message. All right, so let's try out some of the software. Okay, so on this little uh, mini DDI, I have loaded one of the uh, disk files that I linked to in my blog post. 
and it's the first ultra midi disk file so let's just uh, have a look at what's on there and we've got a bunch of programs here called cpc synth cpc through cpc trafo those three uh, you need to be connected up to your midi device and or your pc we're not going to run them just yet but let's look let's focus for now on midi drum dot base and midi out dot base for that we don't need anything other than the CPC itself and the, the soundboard. So let's run MIDI drum. Actually, no, we'll run MIDI out. And this should cycle through a bunch of MIDI sounds to verify that it's working. And it is, it's working. And if we look at the actual program, it's very simple. Uh, he's using some out and FBEE -E, uh, commands along with some values to define what that noise or sound is gonna sound like. So very simple, little bit of basic, which loops through um, to create that effect, which is very easy to do. And what else do we have? Let's run the MIDI drum. And what this will do is it will convert your CPC into a drum set. <clears throat> so let's try it. Listen to that quality. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so the next... Uh, thing that we have on our list, if we look at this uh, disk, are the applications that require us to connect a MIDI device or a PC. So what I have done is, and I've explained how you can configure this in the blog post, is I've connected up a PC um, along with the MIDI card there. And if we look in Device Manager on that PC, you will see under Sound, Video and Game Controllers that it's showing up as a USB MIDI device, right? And if we then load up something called MIDI Bar, and I explained where to download this software, we've got MIDI Bar and MIDI Ox, but if you load up MIDI Bar and then click on the Options button there, and make sure that you've selected USB MIDI interface before you continue, all right? So now I'm gonna connect the cables of the uh, uh, DIN connectors on the MIDI cable uh, to the Ultra MIDI sound card. But before I do that, I'll turn it off. So these are labeled in and out. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I'm gonna connect the out to the MIDI in DIN socket. And I'm connecting the MIDI in to the MIDI out DIN socket. Right, so now we're all connected up. We can turn it on again and load up our disk. And now I'm gonna try running CPC through. And that basically will allow the CPC to play uh, the MIDI file that I've loaded up on the PC. And if you look closely at this, you'll see it says requires Maxim Assembler, and that's because the actual basic program itself assembles some code to get all of this magic working, uh, which is pretty neat, very clever. So on the PC itself, I'm going to um, run this particular, let's see. I think I've crashed the little program. Yeah, let's kill it. Okay. That was a good demo. All right, let's run MIDI bar. <clears throat> let's make sure that it's pointed to the USB. It is. And let's load up a MIDI file. Try this one. Okay. We should hear output on the CPC 
coming now. Nope. Okay. If it happens that the uh, PC complains that there's no MIDI device, just eject and reinsert the MIDI device, and it should work. Uh -huh. Listen to that. That was uh, using MIDI bar to basically play uh, a MIDI file on the CPC. And you could see it was flashing down here because it was receiving the information. And it was also sort of giving us an ASCII representation of that, those audio files. Uh, okay, what's next? The, the next thing that we can try is to load up MIDI aux, which you can see here. Midiox. And just like in the other application MIDI bar, you need to configure the MIDI devices to make sure that it's pointing to the USB MIDI interface, as you can see I've done there. So I'm going to launch this here. And when I press keys on the keyboard here, we should hear something on the CPC. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so that's very cool. Now, what about connecting up an actual MIDI device like a keyboard? So, I do have a keyboard, and that's uh, this one here. I don't know if it's going to fit in the, the, <laughs> the camera view, but it's, it's, it's a big one. So, what I'll do is, I'll connect that up and use a different uh, MIDI cable. And I need one like this, because... Basically, it has uh, MIDI connectors on the back of the uh, keyboard, and these ones will connect to the Ultra MIDI board. And what I'm going to try and do is basically play something on the uh, keyboard uh, directly into the card, uh, and it should allow us to see it on the screen, but also I can even record it. Um, at least that's the, the plan. So let's try that. I've connected things up here and basically here is the MIDI keyboard and as you can see the red MIDI cable is connected to MIDI out on the actual Yamaha keyboard and that is connected all the way into the Lambda board to MIDI in on the DIN socket. All right so let's fire it up run some software and see what we get. Okay, let's see if I can fit everything into one screen. It's not going to be easy. I'm holding the keyboard with one hand. And off it goes. Press any key to start. Let's try this. How about recording it now? So what we have here is I've changed the disc. We're now using Ultra MIDI 3, which I've linked to. It's the third of his uh, discs. And on this one, we have record2.base. Uh, and we're going to run that. I've already loaded it into memory. And as you can see, this one also requires Maxam. And it says done, press any key to start the program. But before we start it, you can see that I've got the keyboard here, it's sitting on my knees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and play a tune and record it on the CPC and then we're going to try and play it back on the CPC. So, let's give it a go. 
So here are the options, one to record, two for playback, X to end your recording or playback and Q to quit. So we'll start with one. Let's end that recording with X and now let's try playing it back and see how that sounds. How about that? Look, no hands. Isn't that amazing? was a success I would say. So now what I can do is choose quit and it prompts me do I want to save the song and I'm gonna go yes. And what we should see happening, if we could see this, yes we do, is it's writing that song data to the disc. So if I do a cut now, let's see what's on the disc, we can see that song.bin is there, song2.bin is also there. Let's try running song.bin see is that the one or song two let's try run i think song two song no let's try song.bin see what happens playback how about that so i've got a file on my disk which was recorded using the Ultra MIDI sound card connected to a MIDI keyboard, which I was playing, and it was all facilitated using the CPC. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to have so much fun with this card. Uh, if any of you are interested in finding out more about it, check out my blog post and make sure to go and see Michael Wessel's uh, project page on GitHub. And of course, um, get in contact with him directly because he's the guy selling it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Ultra MIDI sound card from Michael Wessel, otherwise known as Lambda Michael. See you in the next one. Bye.